Hey guys, my name is Nate, and today on the Otter's Test Kitchen, what we're going to be trying to do is making spinach artichoke dip nachos. Let's get started. So spinach artichoke dip is a favorite appetizer of mine at restaurants. Now, there is a restaurant in Boston that I occasionally like to go to, the Sunset Bar and Grill, where they have a dish called spinach artichoke dip nachos. And I really like it. But the way they do it is they pile it high with nachos and the cheese in there and then put the spinach artichoke dip on top of it. Now, for me, that is too much dip in one place. So, we're gonna reconstruct this, and we're gonna see how it turns out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make homemade pita chips. Um, I'm just gonna use pita, uh, pocket pita bread, slice it up into quarters, bake it. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a spinach artichoke dip. Um, hopefully I'm gonna try to make it as smooth as possible so it spreads well. I'm actually, this isn't a recipe that's mine. This is one I'm actually borrowing from Alton Brown. Um, I will link to the uh, recipe of it. Um, it's one that I saw on the dip episode of Good Eats. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite cooking shows um, and where I get a lot of information from. Um, then what we'll do is we'll put that, we'll put Parmesan cheese on top of that and then we will bake it to kind of crisp up that cheese on top. And then, well, will enjoy. I'm going to try and make this a kind of a quick video um, for the Otter's Test Kitchen um, and we'll go from there. Okay for the uh, spinach artichoke dip we're going to tackle that first so it sits while we make the uh, so it sits while we make the chips. So what it needs is about eight to ten ounces of cream cheese. Uh, what we're going to be doing is heating this up in the microwave. I'll show you that in a minute. Or we'll heat it up off camera, obviously. Then what we're going to be using is frozen spinach. I will be boiling these and then draining it with two cans. Um, so it'll be about a cup and a half or two, about a cup of artichoke hearts. Um, yum, they're good, I like them. Uh, obviously always salt and pepper to taste. Uh, we're going to be using a quarter cup of mayonnaise. Um, also be using a, a quarter cup of sour cream. Uh, the spices are going to be minced garlic and red pepper flakes. And then we'll be using for the spinach artichoke dip about a third of a cup of grated parmesan. Uh, fresh would be better, but we are going with uh, pre-grated for the sake of ease. Um, and what we'll do is. What happens is this gets heated up, and then the and then the rest of the ingredients get mixed in. And I will bring you back when we're doing that. Okay, now that we've warmed up the uh, cream cheese in a bowl for about a minute, just so it gets easier to work with, and we have boiled and drained the uh, spinach and artichokes thoroughly. Um, what we're going to do is now start assembling. So about a third to a half a cup of Parmesan cheese goes in the bowl. Then what we're going to do is use this and we'll also then add about a third of a cup of sour cream as well. And and we'll go ahead and add that. Then we'll go ahead and add a third of a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. 
go ahead and add to that. Then we're going to be adding in a bunch of the garlic and just a, some of the red pepper flakes for taste. Then we'll go ahead and add all of this. Add some salt and pepper. And then we eat it like this. Nah, I'm just kidding. Next thing we're, now we're going to then use a potato masher to kind of mash everything up and mash it together. Once this is thoroughly integrated, what we'll do is we'll get a spoon and make sure it tastes decently. Honestly, I think I'd probably just keep this as is, and if we have leftovers, I probably will. Just want to make sure this is nice and nice and smooth. And go ahead and give this a try. That is really good. Helton Brown really knows this stuff. Um, so we're gonna let this sit and then I'm gonna get to making the uh, pita chips. Uh, excuse me, I need a moment. Um, okay, now for the chips. We're gonna make pita chips. You could probably do this with any chip, but I kind of, you know, I like it with pita chips. So, what we're gonna do is, when you do this with pita pocket bread, um, or else it will be too thick otherwise, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna core these. And then we can just break it, and we'll put them on the, we're gonna put them on a cookie sheet. After we've done that, what we'll do is we'll brush these up with oil and um, salt just to kind of season them and let them crisp up properly. I'm not going to torture you with all of the details on that part uh, just for the sake of time. And what we'll do is I'll bring you back uh, when these have cooked. Uh, so be 370 to 5 degree oven. I'll show you them in the oven. Okay, and into a 375 oven, these go. Uh, half of these we've sprinkled, sprinkled with uh, the dried minced garlic just to kind of see how those taste. And these are going to go in for about 10 minutes. Or until they're nice and crispy. See in time. Okay, I took a quick peek and these look. Oh, yeah, these are definitely done. Some of them are burnt, some of them are fine. But yeah, those definitely look good though. So, next time I'm gonna do it to five, four minutes, probably. I don't know if we'll be it. We'll see what we can salv uh, salvage. Okay. So now what we're gonna do, let's try the chips, just see how they are. These are on the planner side, but that thick crunchiness will do what we need it to do, which is hold the dip. Um, we should have enough 
of that to salvage some nachos. Whoops. Now we move on to assembly. <laughs> okay, now for assembly, what we're going to do is I'm only going to show a few chips, but basically what we're going to do is put it on top and kind of liberally put it on it. Um, we'll try and get a, a thin, a bit of a thinner layer than that, but we'll go with that and then. What we'll do is, in this case, what I'm actually going to do is just put some Parmesan cheese on my hand for this so it's easier to control. I'm going to pile it on top. And then we we'll repeat. Chip. Try to make it a little bit on the thinner side than when I previously did. And then Parmesan cheese. Right on top to crisp it up. Now, I don't think you want to watch me assemble all of these. But I'm going to go ahead and continue to do this. Now, we're going to put the broiler on. And with broilers, you always want to leave it partially open, um, just because of how ovens usually operate. And what I've done is I've moved the rack to the top of the broiler, uh, to the topmost portion so that it's as close to the broiler as possible so we can crisp up the parmesan on top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the broiler heat up a bit and then we will uh, broil these. Okay, due to some technical difficulties, the broiler wasn't working properly, so we didn't get the crispness on top that I was looking for, but I probably could achieve that if I was a little bit more patient when a 350 degree oven for about a minute or a couple minutes, but the chips were a little bit too burnt. I did not want to risk either setting them on fire or over crisping them uh, because as much as I like fire, I don't like eating fire. That makes sense. So here we go. Spinach or dip dip uh, recipe courtesy of Alton Brown's Good Eats uh, dip recipe. Um, pita chips. Um, some Parmesan cheese on top, and nachos, the original way of nachos were made, uh, with the cheese on top and just individually on each chip. Time to test it. The Parmesan cheese on top is really good. Right amount of spinach I took dip on top. Um, until I get that crispness on top down, I may not make these regularly for parties, but the dip is fantastic. And in the random off chance Elton Brown ever watches this, you're awesome. Uh, <laughs> so, and you're awesome for this recipe and... I'm not going to make you watch me eat all of these, but these are good. We're going to be happy tonight. Have a good day.